Introducing appointment mutation or PCR, also known as site-directed mutagenesis, involves designing primers with the desired nucleotide change and using them in a PCR reaction to amplify the target DNA. The key to site-directed mutagenesis is designing the right set of primers that will incorporate your desired mutation. These primers will contain a single nucleotide mismatch at the position where the mutation is intended to be introduced. The primer should also contain enough nucleotides flanking the mutation site to allow for accurate amplification of the target DNA. With whole plasmid site-directed mutagenesis, a set of complementary primers with the desired mutation are designed and used to amplify the entire plasmid by PCR. The PCR product will contain the mutation. Keep note, when setting up your PCR, make sure to use a high-fidelity polymerase. These polymerases are designed to replicate DNA with very low error rates and are crucial to minimize unwanted mutations during the amplification process. Next, we add the DPN1 restriction enzyme to break down the original template DNA. DPN1 cuts only methylated DNA, which comes from bacteria. The new PCR product isn't methylated, so it stays intact. Once complete, the PCR product is ready to transform competent cells. You'll notice that there are nicks from the reaction. However, when you transform this product into competent E. coli, the bacteria's own repair enzymes will naturally seal the nick and circulate the plasmid. Designing primers can be easily done using SnapGene. Let me show you with an example. I'm going to use a commercial GFP plasmid for this example. The first thing I will do is identify the position of my intended mutation, which I have already done and highlighted. What I did was selected the base and added a feature so that I can keep track of it. I will then go ahead to design my primers. It is recommended to design primers between 25 and 45 base pair long. So I will select 15 bases on either side of my desired mutation. Note, I will ensure that the mutation is placed directly in the middle of the primer. Next, I will create new primer by going to primers, add primer, and I will start by creating a primer using the top strand first. I now need to change the G allele to a T allele, my intended mutation. Notice how the new base is mismatched. Next, I need to add a complementary primer to the one I just created. I will copy the top strand primer, close this tab and add new primer, then select reverse complementary. And it's as simple as that. Coming back, Introducing a mutation into a linear DNA product is slightly different. It can be achieved with site-directed mutagenesis by overlap extension. To do this, you'll need to run several PCR reactions using four primers that amplify the regions flanking your mutation site. The first PCR reaction will amplify the upstream fragment incorporating the mutation at its 3' end. The second PCR reaction amplifies the downstream fragment incorporating the mutation at its 5' end. Both fragments will overlap overlap at the site of mutation. In the final step, combine both PCR products and perform another PCR using only the outermost primers. This allows the two overlapping fragments to anneal and extend into a single full-length product that contains your desired mutation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Biolab for more tutorials and insights on molecular genetics techniques. Feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments section below and I will be more than happy to help.